Gentlemen, if Taylor Swift like the MAG-58, I guarantee you NFA and the ATF will be abolished overnight and these things will become vending machine sellable. And any gun you want, it's the market. Women truly do run this country and that woman's name is Taylor Swift. Anyway, we're going over the MAG-58. Let's dive on in. Dorothy, wake up, my bro. We got a mission from the Colonel himself. This tear camp we just raided, the Alouettes said they spotted a, a squatter, and we believe it's a Soviet asset in the area. We got to go hunt him down, huh? Well, let's go get us some Soviets. Uh, yeah, my bro. Uh, I need my AG. One thing you should know, though, my bro, is I had some nasty things about this particular Soviet. Uh, what's that? He was a operator in Vietnam advising the NVA. CIA tried to take him out, but they couldn't get him. Goes by the name of Tokarich Boklov Mananana. Okarev banana nana. Boklova nana. He wears a bowl of clover. Ah, let's go find him. Not a lecker dude. Stay sharp, huh? Gentlemen, today we're going over the FN Mag 58. <laughs> TIA, huh? TIA. Uh. History lesson. Post-World War II and the Swedes are looking for a new machine gun. They have the BAR variants and they tried to make a belt-fed BAR work, but they just couldn't necessarily get it to pass military trials. So they approach FN and FN's like, what do we do? What do we do? And then the FN designers were like, what if we just did it inverted? And that's what you got. You got an upside down BAR and this thing is pretty freaking sweet. Essentially what it is, is a BAR, with the operating system and then a little bit of MG42 sprinkled in there. So it's like they had a baby and nothing is new under the sun because the BAR has been around for over a hundred years now and guys are still essentially using the BAR. Crazy, right? John Moses Browning was a freaking genius, baby. And this gun is a masterpiece. Now, we've had a variant of this on the channel before, the M240 Bravo, but today we have the FN Mag 58. Now, I believe this kit is going to be an Israeli kit, and essentially is this going to be an FN Mag. Pretty simple gun, a lot to go over, and it's very rich with history. Now, the FN Mag would go on to be one of the most popular medium machine gun designs in the Western world, and chances are there's going to be a variant of this gun probably in every country. I would wager there's going to be some sort of M240 or FN Mag in every country in the world because this thing is extremely popular. There was even spinoffs like the Chinese making their own unlicensed copy, and it just has a very good reputation. The thing freaking runs. It hums and it is very scary. As someone that's been shot at by a few medium machine guns, I can attest that they work for suppressing people. And they, uh, thankfully I didn't get killed because I'm here talking about it right now. I mean, this was all for YouTube. This was like a LARPing getting shot at thing for science. This wasn't like actually someone in anger shooting at me. But damn it, man, the suppressive nature works very well. And with the high cyclic rate and the adjustable cyclic rate on this, you can really keep some heads down while your other buds fire and maneuver. Do you know you have rights? Morgan & Morgan says you do. Injured and don't know where to start? Morgan & Morgan has you covered. Your serious injury could be worth millions. And when it comes to serious injury law firms, Morgan & Morgan is the biggest in the country and does not settle for low offers. Recently, Morgan & Morgan has seen verdicts of 12 million in Florida, 26 million in Philadelphia, and almost 7 million in New York. Orders of magnitude above than the highest insurance offered. Morgan & Morgan does not have sign-up fees or costs. The fee is absolutely free unless they win. They will do whatever is, ne whatever is necessary to get the job done, ranging from car accidents, medical malpractice, or defective products. They have specialized lawyers available for your case. Did you know you could start your claim with America's largest injury law firm in just a click? It's so easy. You can start your claim now with Morgan & Morgan at ForThePeople.com slash administrative or click the link in the description down below. Thanks again to Morgan & Morgan for protecting your rights and injuries. Jordi, my bro, what are you going to do after this war, huh? Uh, gonna find me a nice girl and start a family, eh? Have a couple kids. Mm, sounds lecker. Yeah, how about yourself? Thinking of getting into diamonds. I've got a bro of mine named Danny. He does some stuff up in Sierra Leone. Working for that Colonel Coats here. Apparently it's pretty lucrative stuff, huh? Yeah, now uh, I, they don't have any diamonds and they're not allowed to sell any diamonds out of uh, Sierra Leone, are they? Well, you go and get into Liberia first. Uh, yeah, just walk them across the border. Uh, goats or something. You just gotta be careful about those border guards. 
They're getting wise to the goat tactic. Yeah, my buddy Danny got pinched that way. I'm in a lot of trouble with well, the colonel. The colonel is not a big fan of you losing his diamonds. No, no he is not. Now today we went with a particular more Rhodesia vibe. One, because it's fun historically, and two, because it actually ties into a lot of FN mag usage, and it ties into a topic that I'm gonna discuss in the video, which is Rhodesian cover shooting. Now before we do that, I do wanna go over the gun real quick and some of its more interesting features. All right, so real quick, we'll go over some of the parts of the gun. Ian McComb has an excellent video on the Mag 58, so if you want just more in depth on like the parts and mechanics, I'm not that guy. He speaks French, I don't. French. But very familiar flash hider, looks like an L1A1 flash hider very like western nato style flash hider the americans of course would have a different flash hider than the 240 bravo we have the fire regulator still a little warm to the touch now, now we have the quick change barrel very nice and easy and effective <laughs> quick change barrels are important for a belt fed weapon system keep back in there she's kind of hot so i'm kind of being finicky with it Get the ratchet back in. Beautiful sound. Beautiful sound. Damn, do I love that sound. Got our bipod. Now, my dear beloved Jordy is missing the clip in down the bottom for the bipod. Normally, when you hook the bipod in, there's a button on the bottom to release the bipod. Now, we've got the top cover. Now, this is kind of where it gets into the more reminiscent of the MG42 with the feed tray system. Very familiar of the MG42. As someone that's had the MG42 on the channel, I can tell you. Looks familiar. Now we have the guide on top of the bolt that runs within the rails of that feed cover. Always a plane. Good thing I got a 240. Always a plane. Good thing I got the Mag 58 today. God bless them, they're going down. If I could take you up in paradise up above. So then we got our feed tray right here. Now the feed tray looks a little bit different than some of the other Mag 58 feed trays I've seen. That being said, because I had a plan to run a nut sack on this, but I couldn't attach the nut sack to. Now this is a modified nut sack. It's not like a 240 nut sack. If you're wondering what a nut sack is, essentially it's like a little quick sack that holds ammo that's attached to the gun for like an initial contact. And then you get your more belts on the gun. So I couldn't really attach the nut sack that I wanted. And then on the 240s, they typically have some sort of hook down here that you can attach a nut sack. Now I am seeing a knob that potentially we could have wired up. We could still give it a shot of uh, so maybe some 550 cord attached to that and it could act like a nut sack holder. So that's a nice little note. Safety, very simple to run. Not killing. Now you're killing, cross bolt safety. And then we have the nice, beautiful rose wood stock. And then we have the front sight. Now the front sight, I believe is going to be adjustable. And then the front sight is married to the barrel, which the barrels you can change out. Now on the bottom, we have our ejection port. This one does not have the dust cover attached. And then you can see that there's not the button here for the normal Mag 58 that goes into. So Jordan's missing a few pieces. All right, we'll put them on blast a little bit. Huh? So on the rear sight, we have the, when it's flat like this, adjust out to 800 meters, lift her up. Now we got the ladder sight. We can adjust out to 1800 meters, which bipod use gets very optimistic in that sense. But when it's on a tripod, a lot more doable. And I mean, medium machine guns just do love their tripod mounts. Now, one thing you can see is some Hebrew markings letting us know where the Holy Grail is stashed away. It's a dead giveaway of that. This is gonna be one of the Hebrew kits, but it's still going to be the FN mag. Hey, right, bro, got yeah. some blood. Is it red blood for Soviets? Wouldn't it be yellow for those cowards? Yeah, yeah. It is red though. Looks fresh. Well, if I were you, I'd start staying a little bit sharper, huh? Yeah. He's got to be nearby. Gotta get home to my vrouw. Yeah. Just like hunting pigs in the bush, huh? Yeah, yeah. So one really interesting thing that I learned about thanks to an Instagram pen pal by the name of Opinionated Machine Gunner is that I asked him, I was like, hey, I'm working on a video for the Mag 58. Do you have any interesting tidbits for me? And he sent me over a PDF of what is called Rhodesian cover shooting. Some people call it Drake shooting, but it's called Rhodesian cover shooting. And it's really fascinating as far as a military tactic in the modern era goes, right? I'm obsessed with phalanxes. I'm obsessed with the tercio. I'm obsessed with the Roman formations of the day. And it applies to modern day tactics where I get to look at Rhodesian cover shooting. And what that essentially is, I know I've like buzzword, Rhodesian cover shooting, Rhodesian cover shooting. You have to take a shot every time I say Rhodesian cover shooting. What it is is essentially it's shooting where you think the enemy is going to be at, whether they're, it's concealment or it's cover. And the idea is that you shoot low and the idea is that you shoot wherever you think the enemy is going to be at. Because spoiler, during a gunfight, people don't like to be seen. I mean, if someone's shooting at you, you wanna find cover ideally. And then if you don't have any cover, you gotta try and find concealment so they can't see where you are. 
part. This is what was going on during the Rhodesian Bush War. And when they would go on these ops, typically the Rhodesians would be outnumbered. If they were taking a ride via the Alouette helicopter, they were working in four-man teams or a stick. And they'd have three FAL guys and then one Mag-58 guy. And so for the Mag-58 gunner and for the rifleman, this applies as well, you essentially hit contact and then you start shooting from closest to farthest of where you think the enemy is going to be at. And of course, as these guys would go on more and more operations, they'd get much better at this and have a good instinct for it. Maybe certain things just don't look right to them and that's where they shoot. Now, another thing is that the Africans that they were fighting at the time all favor their right hand to be right-handed shooters. So if there was cover, typically they would focus their fire on the left-hand side of that cover. Say if it was, you know, a rock, a boulder, maybe it was a really thick tree because a lot of rounds can just straight up out and out go through trees, but they would focus on the left-hand side of that cover. And it's really interesting. I probably will link the document down below in the description if you want to read it. It's a really fun read. I'm not going to go through the entire thing, but it is a fascinating tactic and it's pretty well thought out. Now, the idea is you also shoot low because if someone hits the deck, they're really only going to be, if they're proned out, 12 inches off the ground. So you're shooting low and there's a chance for those rounds to skip. There's also going to be debris getting kicked up from those 762 by 51 rounds. Spoiler, 30 cal is a big round and it's going to have a lot of energy going down range. So that would also displace someone if you're getting shot at like that and then they'd move and then become an easier target. So it's a really fascinating little tactic to look at and some good knowledge. And that of course would be applied to future countries and war fighters even down the road. I guarantee you that's a tactic used by our US military today. It's a really interesting tactic because a lot of militaries focus on outnumbering the enemy they're going against, but the Rhodesians didn't have that. Typically they were operating outnumbered to begin with, so they needed to start the gunfight off on a very aggressive foot. And just because you can't see someone doesn't mean they're not there. So them shooting at where they think the enemy is at proved to be a very effective tactic. Even out here today, we're just doing some LARPing on the flat range. I was looking at where like these different bushes are and I was like, man, if I was hiding or trying to conceal myself behind this bush, I would just say, okay, I'm going to shoot low. And then that's where I was going off of. So we tried it out a little bit today and spoiler, there was no bad guys I was fighting. So technically I still won. I still won undefeated flat range champs. Thanks, Jordy. Anytime. Admin from the future. Sorry to interrupt the Mag 58, but I have to tell you about this video sponsor, Americana Pipe Dream Apparel. Fantastic young Zoomers getting after it in the Millstrip Space and Arena. Wow, what fantastic young Zoomers they are. They have an inventory of very cool stuff. Stuff such as military surplus, night vision, knives, manuals, a bunch of cool stuff in there, maybe even stuff for camping. Who knows what they have, but go check out the website. A big thank you to Americana Pipe Dream for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the Mag 58. Yeah, down there to the right, contact. Jordy. Yeah. On your mark, my brew. I'll open up. We'll send him to go meet Stalin. Now this beautiful Mag 58 is not mine. It belongs to a friend of the channel and that friend is Jordan. Jordan, get over here. Good to have you back out, man. It's been a while since you've been out. Yes, sir. You're married now. Yep, kid on the way. Kid on the way. Jordan's been up to things. He's been up to good. Typically we say no good, but he's been up to strictly good things. A good woman will do that to you. <laughs> well, you got this Mag 58 here. It is a fully transferable. From my understanding, fully transferable Mag 58s are very rare here in the States. Yes. Yeah, there's not very many on the registry uh, between actual FN 240s or the Mag 58s. This one is a DLO side plate. Those are going to be your more common ones, but even then there's, I wouldn't say more than 20 in total between the DLOs and the 240s, but I could be wrong. How did you acquire such a beautiful piece? I actually found it on Gunbroker of all places, mm -hmm. but did not want to pay the Gunbroker fees, of course. So I contacted the seller directly. A uh, very nice gentleman from the East Coast, works for Thunder Pumpkin Imports, uh, and was able to pick this up because he was selling it. He just picked up uh, two FN 240 Bravos mm -hmm. sequential serial numbers, and Ooh. so he had to move a gun. And, you know, I, I can understand that. His loss was my gain. Clearly, this thing is freaking sweet. And you are a brave man for uh, letting me touch it to begin with, and then letting me just burn belt after belt uh, ammo through this. So I appreciate that greatly. Yeah, transferables, they're an investment, but also at the end of the day, it's a machine gun and it's tool. It's meant to be used. And just like someone who collects a classic car and lets it sit for 40 years and never drives it, buying one of these and never shooting it, it just, it's never made any sense to me. These are meant to be used. And if you're gonna use any of these classic items, 
a freaking Mag 58. <laughs> it's gonna have a hard time breaking on you, so we should be okay. Yeah, and luckily, parts are still relatively readily available for these because mm. they're very interchangeable with 240 Bravo parts. So the US military still uses those, you can find parts around. Good, so you, you have a good investment, Yes. and you have plenty of spare parts, so it's very cool. Well, my man, I appreciate you bringing it on. I appreciate you letting me run and gun it because stuff like this is just very cool. It, not only is it historical and has a lot of rich history, violent, scary history. Violent, awesome history. Violent, awesome history. It is also just outright freaking neat. So I appreciate it very much. Of course, sir. Anytime. I like this guy. He's a good guy. He's a good fella. Suka. <laughs> 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 Uh, bad day to be a Ruski, huh? Now, I love video games, but one thing video games oftentimes gets wrong is how wieldy a medium machine gun can be. If you ever play like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and you're just running around, a slight speed decrease that you'll have as a player, but you can still wield the 240 Bravo like a saw or even an, an assault rifle, which is not necessarily the case. It's not impossible. It's just very, very tiresome because this thing is coming in unloaded 25, 26 pounds. It's a very thick girl and you're gonna need to be a beefy boy to handle such a thick girl. Definitely. So we're gonna demonstrate how tight I can get my grouping from about 12 yards with uh, a belt from the shoulder. My AG is going to help me here. Don't go anywhere without your assistant gunner, kids. It's very true. All right. All right. Going up. Now function. All righty. All A zones. <laughs> So even from this close away, and keep in mind I'm no machine gun expert, grouping's pretty wild. It was doable, I'm a strong boy and I eat my Wheaties, but I got fatigued relatively quickly because you're not just holding it up, you're also trying to mitigate that recoil. The gun doesn't climb wildly, but it's more so keeping it on target. Hey man, you tell me if you have any other friends here and my brew here will make it quick for you, huh? So if you don't mind, I will take only 30 seconds or one minute to give you a short reference to history for giving you a little historical background. History of Russia? Why do I think I care about history of Russia? I'm asking if you have any friends in the area, my bro. Uh, the Russian state started gathering itself as a centralized statehood in 862, when the townspeople of Novgorod invited a Varangian prince, Rurik, to so Russia began to say night night whiskey. Now one thing to consider about these guns is that it kind of does take two to tango. I would encourage you to have an assistant gunner because it really does help out with operating this weapon. If you were seriously operating it, you'd want spare barrels, you'd want that AG to help out with not only just carrying more ammo, but helping and keeping the gun up and loaded because it is kind of awkward in certain positions. You don't get to choose a nice flat firing position out in the flat range. The flat range gets to dictate that to you. So now one thing to also consider is that I'm not a machine gun expert like I said, but I do have a lot of love and a lot of respect for our guys say that went through the military and got really good at operating these belt fed weapon systems. There is a art to it. Now, I think a lot of times the uninitiated man may think, ah, just machine gun, heavy gun, shoot a lot of bullets, very simple. But these things are very crucial to the infantry. There is a delicate art, a fine balance and symphony that goes into it. And there's a lot of respect that I have for the guys that not only run these well, but also implement them very well, because like I said, very crucial. I'd feel really good if I had one of these guys covering me and I had to go do something dangerous. I'd feel very good about myself because this is a lot of firepower output. This thing would absolutely just melt anything in its path. Cover, cars, whatever you have coming at you, these things are very effective at what they do. Even like running it today, the gun is just, it's pretty heavy. We're just doing some light LARPing. So I have a lot of uh, respect for my guys out there that got paid to carry these and pretty much had to live with them. She's thick. She's a thick girl. I mean, guys in the military are pretty used to having thick girls though. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say so.